From the Altai to the White Sea, the lands where Kazakh people rode their horses, the historical expedition will follow the footsteps of ancestors. The three years journey was set out to the west. Kazakh traveler of the 21st century Sapari Skakov and his team have visited more than 20 countries in 70 days. A wonderful story of the great journey is featured in our program, In the Footsteps of Ancestors. Featuring today, what role have the Kipchaks played in the formation of the Georgian statehood, 40,000 against 300,000? How did the army of Artek Khan gain victory over the enemy superior in seven times in number of soldiers? How have the old Turkic stone statues appeared on the Georgian land? According to the previously approved route, the historical expedition in the footsteps of ancestors left Azerbaijan and went to Armenia, bypassing Georgia. And then, after completing the research, turned to the ancient Georgian lands. Georgia is considered to be the Middle Eastern country, however, some refer to the part of Europe. It is among top 70 in terms of competitiveness and in the top 10 in security. Yet despite the achievements, people are very humble here. There are some historical reasons causing it. Many centuries ago, more precisely in the 12th century, a serious danger threatened over the Georgians. Then they asked for help from the Kipchaks. To learn more about these and other facts, to explore historical monuments, the caravan of the historical expedition stopped in the Transcaucasian state, which is also called the Land of Eternal Spring. All the exhibits of the history of Georgia are kept in the local museum, in Tbilisi. The chronology of the values begins with antiquity, but from about the 12th century history of the Georgians is closely intertwined with the Kipchaks. Not only the scientists know it well, but also almost every Georgian citizen. Georgia, uh, this country, which is historically connected, where, uh, еще... Since the 12th century, the Kipchaks appeared in Georgian history not as enemies but as civilians. It was a difficult time for Georgians. A dangerous threat was hanging over them. To preserve the integrity of the state, King David IV formed an army and started to search for reliable allies. Those were the Kipchaks. David IV, Agma Shanebeli, lived in the period from 1073 to 1125. The Georgian king came from the dynasty of Bagration. At the age of 16, in 1089, he became the ruler of the country. Thanks to his wise policies, the Georgians were able to preserve their independence. This mountain 70 kilometers away from Tbilisi would probably tell a lot of interesting stories if it could speak. It would have told about the Kipchaks helping the Georgians, their courage and heroic battles. This was the place where in 1121 the famous battle of Didgori associated with the invasion of Georgian lands by Seljuk Turks and Persians took place. After this battle, Georgia regained its long-awaited freedom and the golden age of its development started. This is the largest, the most crucial and the most important battle in the Georgian history because this battle, its outcome directly influenced the fate of Georgia. Who knows what would have happened to the Georgians if the Kipchaks did not come to the rescue. In the early 11th century, the Seljuk state was divided into many independent states. Arabian Iraq, Western Iran, part of Syria, and part of the Eastern Anatolia, all this vast territory belonged to the Iraqi Sultanate. At that time, Georgian Kingdom was depending on the Iraqi Sultanate, 
the intervention of the Seljuks in the lives of Georgians led to the weakening of this Georgian state. Moreover, it has nearly completely disappeared. In these difficult times, the king of Georgia, David IV, made the right political decisions. He was the son-in-law of Kipchak Khan Artik. Therefore, when threatening the government, he asked for help his father-in-law, Artik Khan. After all, 300,000 strong army of the Seljuks could easily destroy the 10,000 strong Georgian army. Artik Sarihan Ali, Kipchak Khan and famous commander, lived in the 11th-12th centuries. The Russian chronicles contain lots of information about him. They call him Atro Khan, the son of Sari Khan. Artik Khan had a son, Konshak, who became one of the main characters in the annals of the Lay of Igor's warfare. Historical sources describe Artik Khan's coming to the Georgian lands with a 40,000 strong army. The 300,000 strong army of the Seljuk Turks opposed them. But in some sources, there is evidence that the army of the enemy reached 600,000. Even if it was 300,000, the Seljuk army was six to seven times bigger. The Kipchaks won. They knew military tactics. There were many military leaders of the 20th century who diligently researched the tactics of Artik Khan. That is why this battle is known very well. Either we win or we die. These words were said by David on the Mount Didgori as a call for the warriors. It was a very important and decisive battle for the Georgians. The outcome of the battle marked a turning point in Georgian history. As you can see, the victory was very important for Georgians. Even this very monument shows that. The Battle of Ditgari, or rather the victory in it, raised the authority of King David among the Georgians. David IV and the Georgians were very grateful to the Kipchaks for the help and victory over the enemy. In a sign of special respect, they were given lands in the south and southeast of Georgia. Artikhan married one of the Georgian beauties. A detachment of 5,000 Kipchaks became a guard of the Georgian ruler. After the Battle of Ditgari, the Kipchaks also participated in the fight for Tbilisi in 1122. We are immensely grateful to the Kipchaks who helped us liberate our land. We owe it to your ancestors. Their feet must not be forgotten. And not just the historians should know, but all the residents of Georgia, the descendants of the Kipchaks, still live in Georgia. Nine centuries have passed after the Ditgari battle. Times have changed, but the fateful battle still remains in the memory of the people. A big festival is held on the 12th of August to mark this victory in Georgia. Its organizers specifically invited the members of the historian expedition in the footsteps of ancestors as honorary guests to the celebrations. Known worldwide, the Battle of Didgari gave independence to the Georgians. Every year on the 12th of August, they all gather at Didgari Mount and celebrate the day of gaining freedom. The soldiers in the front ranks, swords and spears are gleaming in the sun. Theatrical performance shows the price of enormous efforts made to fight the enemy. If Arte Khan did not come to rescue the Georgians, then it's unknown what would have happened to them now. Therefore, the Georgian people are very grateful to our ancestors. As 
A wonderful holiday, the holiday of unity and friendship, that is the friendship between the Kipchaks and Georgians. We are proud of this friendship and celebrate this date every year. There is no future without the past. The younger generation should know their history, so these holidays are very important. In this regard, Safari Skakov expressed his proposals to the Georgian leaders. We have to make certain efforts in order to bring our countries together, to educate young people on the example of our great ancestors who fought for the independence. We could, for example, erect a monument to Artik Khan and David the Builder in the capitals of two states and place them together. They should stand together. And furthermore, you celebrate every year, I think, on this holiday, it is necessary to invite the descendants of the Kipchaks from Kazakhstan, the French, the Ossetians, because their ancestors also fought in this battle. It is a common holiday for all four nations and all men should celebrate together. It will be the 900th anniversary of the Battle of Didgory in 2021. This date could not have come at a better time for the implementation of Sapari Skakov's proposal. There were a good few of such battles as the Dead Gori on Kazakh land. According to the scientist, we should celebrate these dates. The program article of the President of Kazakhstan course towards the future modernization of public consciousness is aiming at these very goals. In our history, there are also many battles against the Jungars, when our ancestors gained glorious victories. If we remembered and celebrated those dates, kept the money of heroes, it would have been the true spiritual revival. The Kipchaks helped not only Georgia, but also Egypt, Byzantium, Hungary and many other European and Asian countries. No one could resist the enemies of the conquerors, breaking the peace of the villagers better than the Kipchaks. Ancient manuscripts show this. And yet, wherever the Kipchaks were brought in, they always went back to their homeland. This is evidence with Artik Khan's deed. He spent about eight years in Georgia, however, yearning for the motherland, returned. Being a slave in a native land is better than being a lord in a foreign land, they say. The strong expression belongs to Artik Khan. The reason for Artik Khan's return to the native land is the following. His younger brother sent a few bags of sage from their native steppes for the relatives to feel the smell of home to get back soon. The Kipchak soldiers took the bunch of sage and put it in the pillow. The next morning they could not resist the longing for the homeland intensified with the smell of the native steppe. After that, the warriors started thinking of coming back to their native land. This mass of rock is one of the traditional grave monuments common in religious architecture. It is usually installed on the foundation. One might be of rounded square shape. Half of our ancestors returned to the homeland. The other half stayed in Georgian lands by the request of David the Builder. They received various posts 
and land. The ruler of the Georgians was afraid of the Persians and Turks' Seljuks to return. We found many Turkic tombstones on those lands where our ancestors lived. Seventy kilometers away from Belisi, there are many stone sculptures in the desert. From a historical point of view, all of them are priceless, but unfortunately, not preserved by anyone. Local historian Elbrus Mamedov has been studying them for the last five years. He registered them and took under protection. We are preparing documents for UNESCO in order to preserve this heritage. Unfortunately, the monuments are disappearing. Now there is a little more than 200 of those monuments. They are mostly found in the south of Caucasus, Georgia, Azerbaijan, northern Iran, Nakhchivan, Armenia, and northern Turkey. These tombstones have been found by Russian and Armenian scientists. They were equally of the opinion that all monuments belong to the Turkic heritage. Scientists, ethnographers repeatedly raised the issue of protection of the Turkic statues from different stands. However, the issue is still not resolved. Moreover, some people carry them to the city center and install for the beauty in front of institutions and agencies. The most interesting is that these statues are often found in Kazakhstan. There is a certainly direct link among the gravestones of the two countries, the Kipchaks. They were brought to Georgian land by Arctic Khan in the 12th century. Mass rocks in Georgia, according to the researchers, date back to that period. Basically, these tombstones used to be raised for the heads of clans and tribes or soldiers who showed special courage. Many scientists also say that there are crosses depicted on the stones. There is nothing surprising because before Islam, the Turks have been practicing Christianity. This is an ancient settlement of Dmanisi, 100 kilometers away from Tbilisi. It is one of the most ancient cities in Georgia. There is information that the Great Silk Road passed through the city. This is the place where goods of two continents, Europe and Asia, met. Old historic places have been preserved. There are still the remains of the caravanserais. Until the early 20th century, trade relations in our town never interrupted. We even had lots of camels. The Georgians did not raise these animals. They were used only for trade caravans. Could the descendants of the Kipchak warriors be among today's Georgians? In order to answer this question, the members of a scientific expedition under the leadership of the head of the project, Shezhere, Jacques Selik Sabirov, took a genetic test of the local population. Genetic studies of this kind make it possible not only to determine the relationship between the two peoples, but also to learn when there is a separation of one common genetic cluster. We send all materials to the Houston laboratory in America, and soon we will get the results. The historical expedition visited all regions of Georgia where our ancestors have been. Scientists have collected a large material to study.
historical expedition in the footsteps of ancestors still has a long way to go. Next stop after Georgia is Kabardino Balkaria. There are impressive mausoleums similar to the Kazakh yurt. Might our ancestors be buried in these tombs? The answer is in the next episode.